morning, Nigel. Good morning, Gaunty. Um, let's get straight to it, shall we? You've been getting a little bit of flat. By the way, nice picture of me and you today in the sun. Have you seen the yeah, ad? Yeah, I have, yeah. You like that, don't uh, you? Um, well, the old I'm, halo round your head. What I, do you think? I'm for... not that happy about the European flag being around me. But... <laughs> I think that's good. I think that's good. I think that's, I think that's Chris Stevens taking the mickey. Well, that's what I want to escape from. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Let, let, let's talk about you, Kip, then. You've been yeah. getting a bit of flack recently. When we had uh, Libertas on yesterday and the leader of a Libertas on, and he started off by talking about expenses. There's also this story that's been peddled, and I'm going to put you right on the spot today. The BNP, I've been getting loads of emails about it. They said that you said on a TV show or radio show with Dennis McShane that you'd had £2 million in expenses and you, if from the EU and you'd use those, uh, that £2 million to fund your party. What's the truth behind that one first? Let's start there. Yep, fine. Well, this was a, a debate I did with Dennis McShane. And he said, well, how much money have you had mm. in expenses and allowances? Over? And I've been there for 10 years. And I said, my total expenses and allowances over 10 years must be about £2 million. So you did say that? Which is the same for every okay. single MEP. That's what Glennis okay. Kinnock gets. That's what I get. Okay. And what I wanted to do, John, we've been focusing on Westminster. Let's talk about what MEPs cost us. Let's talk about what the EU costs. But then the other point I made was that I have not used any of that money to lie my own pockets. I have been the most active MEP for the last 10 years, travelling the length and breadth of this country, pushing not just the party, that wasn't the argument mm, I made, mm. but pushing the message, which is entirely within the rules. So you, and OK, if you're that transparent then, let's have them all published on the internet now. Well, that is... That's a fair point, isn't it? It is, and let me answer it, because yeah, there course, was... Course, course. This point was made in your newspaper this morning, and it's not quite right. It says that I have refused to say how I've spent my expenses and allowances. The biggest single allowance we get is the allowance to employ staff, and all of that is published up on the internet. All right? The one thing that I haven't published is the general expenditure allowance, which no British MEP for 30 years had published until a few months ago, and the other parties started to do it, and I've made a pledge that all UKIP MEPs from this election will do it, and I've called well, why in... why don't you do it before? Because there was no point in doing it. The others were doing it merely for electoral gain. Uh, you know, okay. trying to show they were good boys, but, having not done it for 30 years. It, and the point I'm making, John, is we okay. have got we have got the biggest EU whistleblower, the accountant, Marta Andreasen, who is coming in and will make sure that from this election onwards that we get this 100% right. OK. This is Nigel Farage. He's the leader of UKIP. We're just questioning him on this. Then we're going to go to Henry in London, John in Maidstone, Meg in Torquay, Chris in Portsmouth, and Margot as well in Kettering. Coming to you in a moment, if you've got a question for Nigel, he always speaks his mind. You might not agree with him. 020 64 7000. Let's go back to this article in today's newspaper, then, yep. it says. Um, Mr Farage admitted he could not prove how he had spent his own expenses and allowance. You stand yeah. by that? You, got, you, you no, can't say that, I'm afraid that's just not quite but, right. But have, you, have you say? That's what it's about. As I said, the biggest chunk of my allowances is the money I'm given to employ staff, and I published all of that last year. It's in the okay. public domain, and incidentally, all of that is handled for me by a chartered accountant. I don't even see the money. OK, and what about the line, the party refused to release details of how his MEPs have spent taxpayers' money uh, when, when the Sun challenged it as part of our campaign no. against Eurofiddling? Did we, you refuse? Every single Brit UKIP MEP published last year details of how they spend most of their money. Not all of it, but most of it. All right. So After this election, will you publish everything? After this election, we're going to publish everything. And as I say, we're going to get Marta Andreas and to make sure we get it 100% right. But it right. is true. You've got a terrible reputation as a party. 25% of them have uh, been booted out, haven't they, of your MEPs. One went well, to prison for fraud. Well, that happened. He was elected on our ticket, but he never, yeah. took, he never took his seat for us. Yeah. All right. He, he lied to us. He conned us. We've had trouble with two members. All right. And in both cases, John, without any debate, without any argument, we have said, you've broken faith with us and therefore you're gone. We've dealt with it ruthlessly. Okay. If the same was happening in Westminster, what would be happening next Thursday uh, would be a rash of by-elections. four of your 12 no, not, are no longer take well, the whip. That's well, the truth, well, isn't it? Well, again, you see, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. No, but, no, you don't have to be sorry. But the, sun, but the sun's got this wrong. You know, two we kicked out and we expelled. Yeah. One was a former daytime TV presenter Robert with a suntan yep. who went off and did his own thing. But, you know, your article here says Roger Natman has quit the party. Yep. Just not true. 
He's still got the whip? Yes, just not true. Okay. You know, he's still a member of the party and it's just not true. OK, now we started this campaign on Monday, of course, saying if you think the scandal in Westminster's bad, it's even worse in Brussels. Would you agree with I've George Pascoe Watson, our political editor? I have been saying that for ten years. I have been trying to get this right. debated for ten years okay. and no one up until now has wanted to listen, really. Explain to me how much expenses you can pick up. A typical day or a typical week. Just well, explain to the <coughs> British public what happens when you get yeah. on Eurostar. Right, it's a completely different system to Westminster. That's right. the first thing to hook on board. OK. You are paid for every day you're in Brussels. Right. And you're paid not to work in the UK. So, Explain right, that I'll... to me. Run that one okay. past me again. OK. This is Nigel Farage. We're okay. coming to your calls in a moment. 020 33 64 7000. You're paid for being there and paid for not working in the UK. Absolutely. Go on. Every MEP gets 3,500 quid a month paid direct into their bank account, and that is the general expenditure allowance. That is what is for spending in the United Kingdom. Okay. It covers running an office, political campaigns, yeah. it covers travel... Secretary and all that. It, no, not no? secretary. This is purely for you to spend yourself... On the individual MEP. Going about. Got you. If, and this has gone on for 30 years, if you don't have a UK office, if in fact you live in Brussels and never, vi and never visit Britain, you're allowed to keep the whole lot. OK. So the way to make money as an MEP is to go to Brussels, yeah. live in Brussels, yeah. sign on for your daily allowance. Which is how much? It's about €280 Euros a day. Right. So sign on for that every single day. When you sign on, you don't actually have to go inside and do any work, do you? Oh, no, what happens is on Friday mornings there is a queue when the office opens at 8 o'clock in the morning and they go in, sign on for the day and go straight to the airport. Right, OK, carry on. And that's, and been that's going free on as well, is it, the airfare? The airfare. Oh, you're more than compensated for the airfare. What so, do you mean, I mean more than compensated? Oh, they pay you um, if you book a, a cheap ticket. Is it true that if you get a 40 quid ticket, for example, yes. from EasyJet or whatever, you can actually charge two or 300 quid the first class fare? You are given a set of... I mean, that is actually changing. Let me just clarify, though. You don't have to, like, you don't... Say say if I went abroad, right? Yeah. And uh, and then the editor said to me, right, go on to you, give us your receipt, you know, yeah, it'll be yeah. Graham Dudman or whatever. I give him I give him the airfare, and it was 48 quid. He'd say, well done, go on to you, got a cheap seat, there's your 48 knicker back. He wouldn't say, oh, airfare to Brussels, I'll give you 500 no, quid. I did this. I did this um, early in my uh, parliamentary term. I went Ryanair okay. to a small German airport and then got a taxi into Strasbourg, and the airfare cost me about 40 quid, and I was reimbursed 600 quid. Yeah, but and what, I publicised all of that. OK, and what did you do with the 560 then? Put it in your back pocket? Spent back pocket? it, spent it on pushing the campaign in this country. And, and, okay. if, and, and in the early days, Gaunty, I gave cheques to charity. How, how does it stop you not becoming a self-serving pig yourself then? Cause, and this then goes back to Westminster, I it guess, doesn't. as well. There's a can I keep calling it this canteen culture. It, you know, people say to me, why don't you stand for Parliament, Gaunty? The truth is, I'd be worried that I could sink into this. I, I think... Because it I must mean, be easy. You're out in Brussels, fancy a good booze, and you like your drink, like me. You fancy <laughs> <laughs> a nice big meal. You you ain't paying for it. It's, whoa, it's on the gravy train. Oh, no, I mean that's absolutely right. And it is it is a lot of British MEPs have gone okay. out to Brussels over the last thirty years as sceptics, but have become ever more a part of the Go system. Native, so to but speak. Absolutely. To use that old term. But it hasn't happened to us in UKIP. We're there. We're not there to enrich ourselves. We're there because we want to sack all the MEPs. We want to save a yeah. lot more money well, you say and get us to, out. You say not to enrich yourself, but they reckon if you're an M MEP for a full term, you'd become a millionaire. So have you? If you are dishonest about it. So what have you done with your money? if you live in Brussels and if you do nothing in the UK, I have been the hardest working British MEP every year for the last 10 years all over the United Kingdom. Far from being better off as doing this, I'm sure. much worse off 10 years okay. on doing Let's it. Let's just go back then. So you get paid this money then for being over there. What else do you get then? You get all the X's without any receipts. Yeah? Yes. What yes. else? You get... The allowance to employ staff, yep. that's slightly separate. Yep. Um, and there are there is another big allowance, which is called the information budget. Oh, yeah, what's that? Now, well, it's, it's to use to print literature, to print leaflets, that kind of thing. And what MEPs tend to use it for, they use it to ensure they get re-elected. OK. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to go yeah. straight to the calls. OK. And if you've got any question you want to ask Nigel Farage... I mean, the big problem we've got, John, is that the expenses route is overtaking everything. What we should be talking about is the fact that we're giving £40 million a day yeah. of taxpayers' money to Brussels. What we should be talking about is the fact that, as an EU member, we're not allowed to have our own immigration and asylum policy. What we should be talking about is the fact that our three parties in this country have lied to us consistently ever since the 1970s about the true nature of the the European Union, and we need to have a big debate on those issues. But the one thing, John, where you're dead right is some commentators say, oh, well, UKIP are getting these votes because it's a protest against the expenses scandal. Everybody forgets 
that we got 16% of the national mm. vote in the last European elections, and that because we've had MEPs, and because, going back to Margot, you know, people like me have travelled the country making these arguments, we now have, for the first time, a clear majority okay. of the British people that support us. Okay. To find out more about who we are and what we stand for, go to the UK Independence Party website at www.ukip.org.